often, believe it or not, can start, uh, can, can be uh, a part of and involved with starting a small business and starting a new business. Why does that matter? Because for a lot of people, you, you've set your dreams, you set a course and you said, I'm gonna work with this company, I'm gonna start a job, and in 37 and a half years, I'm gonna retire. Get a gold watch, sit on that rocking chair, watch the sunset, and play with my dog, Buck. But then what happens? You get laid off. Suddenly you're working with folks you didn't really like or your company's asking you to do some unethical things. And along that journey, you say, you know, I could probably run this company or another one even better. So for a lot of Americans, for various reasons, we go out and we start our own businesses, small businesses. It's really what America is all about. And the United States system, California, LA County and Santa Clarita are sometimes conducive for you to, to start a small business and sometimes it's more difficult than it has to be. You'll see it kind of ebbs and flows. Uh, but we, we occasionally have amazing success stories. We do and we see a lot of uh, emerging businesses uh, now and again and I think it's pretty exciting because it's it tells you that people still have hope to chase their dreams and to take a risk take a chance and hopefully they've chosen a, a service or a product that they really feel passionate about because that's where I think a lot of times the success lies in a small business you, you see a lot of passion in in an owner uh, of, a, of a company and the, I've seen them take them uh, to amazing levels and I think that's one of the elements that you have to have and occasionally you'll here is spotlight those folks right here on your hometown station, specifically the Total Financial Solutions Safer Money Hour. Well, uh, with us today is Edgar Leon. Edgar, tell us a little bit about uh, you personally, but more importantly, your passion or your reason for starting a small business. We'll get into that business here in just a second. Sure. Uh, so my passion is jiu-jitsu, Brazilian jiu-jitsu to be specific. Um, decided to get out of corporate America and said, uh, let's go ahead and uh, open up a business where you just you love what you do then people are gonna see through and they're gonna really say okay I, I want to sign up so tell me why you chose Santa Clarita as a place for your small business the biggest part that attracted me to this area was large families a lot of families a lot of kids uh, great community a lot of um, recreations so when you see this outdoor living that Santa Clarita has it just makes it makes you want to get out versus being in the inner city I'm from downtown LA, basically, and and we could have opened up a shop there, but I really wanted to have that hometown feel. Yeah, I, I think you'll see across the board between the bike trails, the, the the public parks, and the open space, Santa Clarita really has something for everyone, all the way up to and including when when my kids used to to play in tennis over in Valencia at the the little public parks. You know, you have these little tennis lessons, um, golf lessons. I mean, really any kind of sport. And for a while, my kids were in martial arts. I spent about 22 years of my life uh, in martial arts as a black belt in jiu-jitsu. Uh, but my, my style is something called Budoshin jiu-jitsu, and I was teaching from about the age of 16 years old. And in that process, Budoshin is, is slightly different than Brazilian jiu-jitsu, jiu -jitsu, which is really your background. Correct. Yeah, tell us about Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and what is it? So the biggest difference, I would say, is Brazilian jiu-jitsu emphasizes the smaller person taking control of the larger person. It allows you to take the ground, go to the ground, and be on your back. You know, for a lot of people, uh, Edgar, they don't realize in a fight situation, whether you're tall or small, or, you know, big, it, you almost always end up on the ground. I think it's what people forget. And watch these, uh, unfortunately, uh, the world of YouTube is out there and, and videos on, on the internet. But you can see how a real fight begins. It doesn't sit there where people are blocking off and it's like a boxing match. You know, you hit once, I hit once. It's not about that. It's, a, it's yeah. ducking and slipping on the gravel and bumping your head. And I don't care how good you are, you're going to still get hit. So you got to understand you're going to take a punch. I mean, these things are, are realistic. And you provide a self-defense for that littler person. Sometimes, it, let's call it a weaker person sometimes, right? A Correct. smaller person versus a larger person. Sometimes strength is, is not in your favor. But Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu really comes into that. Correct. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu really helps you, it helps the individual um, understand that it's not your strength, it's not your size. It's knowledge of the body and moving around that individual and controlling their limbs. And ultimately, either holding them long enough for police to come, 
for others to come and help you get that person assailant away from you or defeating that person via an arm lock or a choke ultimately we, we teach people it's self-defense first and foremost you can never assume you're going to be bigger or stronger than the person attacking you you have to assume they're going to, they're going to be larger so the ground is your friend being on your back is the greatest position in brazilian jiu-jitsu pretty much because that's where we teach you how to control the person that's on top yeah, and often if you're the bad guy, uh, you think having uh, your victim on the on their back is the weakest point. Correct. Now we saw uh, jujitsu uh, featured in the the uh, I guess it's called a full cage. I don't want to call it something else, but but really it's the it's the full cage match fighting. Correct. That we saw for years. Correct. And really, it was started by the jiu-jitsu guys correct it's the the gracie family uh, that came over from brazil that first took the traditional japanese jiu-jitsu and turned it into what we call now brazilian jiu-jitsu uh they came over from brazil and it started in america and first they started posting videos actually back then there was no posting it was vhs videos that went out to the world showing them <laughs> challenging others other arts in matches and whether whatever art it was it always ended in the ground and brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioners would always win so that developed into a cage match that we all know of now and that showed different styles of martial artists going into a cage going against each other and eventually the there was a victor and the victor in many of these was a brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner yeah hoist gracie if you remember that name was really the person who who took this to a level of uh taking all comers you don't have to be that excited as a as a oh I don't know as a practitioner. You can be a lady, a child. Maybe that kid is being bullied and misses the confidence. So Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu really gives a little bit of that. Tell me it, the difference between Japanese traditional Japanese Jiu-Jitsu, which is what I learned, sure. and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So it, with traditional Japanese, it emphasizes being on top and doing a lot of throws, like judo. It emphasizes strength, technique and strength, but if you are not larger than your opponent, then you are at a disadvantage. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu says, I am smaller, I will grab you and I will pull you to the ground and I will then control you and submit you with knowledge and leverage. That is a real difference. One of the things I used to see was how judo worked very closely with grabbing of the clothes and pulling of the clothes. And, and, but grabbing somebody's t-shirt, it rips. And in no time, the leverage you thought, which was a very thick cotton uh, material that you could use to throw the person or choke them out, all of a sudden the t-shirt is in, is in tatters and, and it's irrelevant to the game anymore. Right, right. The, the real, the control that comes in, let's just say they're both individuals have no t-shirts, is really understanding how to control their limbs, their arms, controlling uh, the distance, keeping them close enough where their punches can't really knock you out. And if you can, pushing them f so far away where their punches can't knock you out. But once you get into that red zone, as I call it, uh, then you clinch, go to the ground, and then you control those limbs. Folks, we're talking to Ed Gurleon from uh, Gracie uh, Ibarra Jiu-Jitsu, located on Lions Avenue. Tell us a little bit about uh, opening your business. Gracie Ibarra Jiu-Jitsu, folks, is not just self-defense, self-confidence, but it really kind of brings into play, uh, I think, a small business owner starting through his passion right here in Santa Clarita and bringing uh, to us, really, I think, one of the best jiu-jitsu styles, martial arts styles, period. Uh, okay, tell us about opening your store. It's been a great experience. I have to say that the city of Santa Clarita has been awesome in making sure that we were up and running. Uh, we had to get the location up to code, which I have to say, it, having a location where you're going to have children, uh, present and multiple adults you want to make sure that everything is up to code the city was awesome um, now our location that it's open, it was a great experience uh, the reception has been awesome in the community the people that are coming in uh, are the type of people that we look for are the people that come in and say I I've never been in sports I've never done anything I don't know how to defend myself those are the type of people that we want to welcome we want and we welcome everybody but we especially welcome those that are s smaller weaker that don't have that background that athletic ability to say i can defend myself because those are the people we want to show them this is what we, we can do for you so your store is located where uh i always uh, get it off it's 25067 peachland avenue 
So right on the corner of Lyons and Peachland, depends on where you are. Uh, remember the old family uh, Christian bookstore, Smart and Final, in that same center. Uh, they are right in that center. So you must. So you have a Peachland address then. Correct. I okay. have Peachland. Yeah. yeah. So right in the corner, if you will, behind Peachland uh, and Lyons Avenue. Folks, why did I ask him to come on the show? Uh, I I love the fact number one that people start small businesses. To me, that's the heart of the, of what America and freedom is all about. It's those folks that take a chance, that put it all on the line, that don't understand the nine to five, Monday through Friday, uh, holidays off mindset. Because it's there's nothing wrong with that, but understand that that small business owner is the person who's putting it all on the line, and we want to honor that. We want to thank them because they allow the rest of us to survive, the rest of us to either have jobs or, in fact, to uh, to enjoy their services or their products. So anyway, I went by, I happened to see Edgar out there. And, he was in the middle of construction, so it was, wasn't all the way done uh, yet the way it is today. And I thought, wow, this is incredible. And his personality is overwhelmingly welcoming. And that was helpful when you're dealing with the public. Because when you're working at a Brazilian jiu-jitsu place, people can become self-confident. But they also have a period of time where they're scared and they're unsure of themselves. Correct. That That window of time... What is that process like? How long are you seeing before somebody is proficient to feel confident? Great question. It really depends on the individual. Um, I, we have an 11-year-old that just signed up seven days ago, and his confidence is already through the roof because he's invincible now. He knows he's around people that are going to help him. Uh, then you have individuals that take a little bit longer. So we really tailor the experience to each individual. We find out what they want to do. Some individuals just come and say, I want to just lose weight. Some individuals come and say, I want to learn self-defense because a friend of mine was attacked. Or something happened in their life. And so we really kind of look to see what's happening. Now, the curriculum is the same for everybody, but I make sure that every individual is getting what they need, but, and I engage them. And, and so it's, it just depends on the individual. But usually you start to see, on average, I would say, by the second month, they start seeing the benefits, not just physically, but mentally. The physical aspect is great. They start losing weight. Uh, I myself went from being 216 pounds to now I'm down to 190. Um, my stress level went down. I'm no longer on high blood pressure medication. But the thing that you don't see is the mental change. You stop looking at, if you will, air quotes, problems as problems you start looking at them as okay not a problem not a problem i can get through this if i could get through somebody sitting on my chest for 10 minutes i can get through anything and that's where it really changes the dynamics it's the mental switch and how many days a week is somebody going at minimum we we request two days a week at very minimum and that helps them really see the moves and understand the techniques and helps them through their progression of, of going up through their belts and rank so figure something like 15 to 20 lessons in a short period of time. I always said that, you know, it's all about experience. How, if, if it takes 50 times to be good at something, you can take two years to do it or you can take two months. Uh, you're going to still need to get a period of time where you have a concentration of, of memory. I don't care if you're learning to, to manage your financial life or you're learning to try to invest or save or plan. The, the more frequently and more often you do it, you start building that muscle memory and that's very helpful. Uh, Jeff, I know you had a question as well. Well, I think back to, you know, being being younger and more fit and more active, you know, your mind kind of always stays there. But when you push yourself, and I realize that when I take my son to play basketball or any type of sports outside, I realize how quickly I get winded or, you know, that, that leg is a little bit more sore or the ankle is a little bit more tender than I thought it would be. What can somebody do? Uh, well, it's kind of a two-part question. Is there a trial period for with your program? And what can somebody do to prepare for this? I would say it's kind of an undertaking to, to start a jujitsu uh, being a practitioner. Sure. Great question. We do. We actually almost mandate that they the person comes in they take two free lessons okay. uh, and they try to spread it out throughout the week they don't do it back to back and that gives the, the person the opportunity to evaluate the number one the person the people working there yeah. super officer smart it, it gives them a chance to evaluate whether they like how the facility looks how it smells how 
the curriculum is being taught, what type of mindset is within the other students. Because you could go into any facility to learn anything, and if there's a wrong mindset, the product could be great, but the mindset's wrong, it's going to turn you off. So we recommend two classes, one as a private, where you just do it one-on-one basis, either yourself, your wife, with myself or somebody else in, in the academy. And then the next free class is with a actual class environment where they get to experience the full full effect. So we do offer those two free. And then we recommend that they take some time to think about it because it is a commitment in time and finances. And you, they have to commit some, some money to that endeavor. Um, the second part I forgot was, again, uh, what should they do? What should they do to prepare? I think the, the best thing they could do is take that first step to come in, observe, and just say, I'm going to do something that maybe I've never thought of doing, maybe I've never done, but I'm going to do it because I want growth. I want change. I want to learn self-defense. I want to be able to protect my family or myself or give my children that ability to do that. Yeah, fo- folks, we're talking to Gracie Ibarra, jiu-jitsu owner, Edgar Leon. It's located over in Peachland and, and Lions, right off of, of Lions, if you will, right behind the old family Christian bookstore right next to Smart and Final, a couple doors down. Uh, why am, why do I have him here? Number one is small business owner. Number two is I think you need to understand there's a mental aspect to self-defense and to protection. You know, we entered our kids in a place in uh, Taekwondo classes when they were little. And even in martial arts, when I was doing our full contact stuff, really before the UFC started, uh, some of our guys, we actually helped train a, a guy that, that uh, competed in the second UFC. Mm-hmm. Uh, and at the time, he had the fastest knockout uh, ever, right, out of the two UFCs. Uh, today, I'm sure it's been beat. But back then, it was pretty pretty tough guy. I remember flying to, uh, to Texas to train with him. But when we entered our children into uh, something like Taekwondo, it has its purpose. It has its place. It's great. It isn't really set up the same as self-defense, street self-defense, in the sense that most fighting ends up on the ground. Yeah. We've, I saw it when I was in law enforcement. I saw it uh, you know, when I was a, a martial arts practitioner. You see it all the time. So you need to have that second layer of protection. Uh, Edgar Leon from Gracie Bar Jiu-Jitsu, uh, located on Peachland and Lions. Tell me a little bit about the, uh, the family discounts. Do you have a way for a family to come together if they want to say, we're going to put down the video games, we're going to put down the, the cell phones, or we're going to come in with three, four, five of us? That is correct. We do have a family discount. Essentially, the first three family members get a very, very high discounted rate, and the fourth and fifth family member are free. So we make sure that if you're a family of five, family of six. I mean, it just depends. We want the family to do it together. And so we we have a couple families that are already enrolled that like that because the dad wants to the dad doesn't want to get left behind and he sees the two boys. Oh, for sure. <laughs> so they sign up right away. And as soon as mom walks in and sees what the boys are doing or, or even the, the, the daughters are doing, mom say, okay, I need to learn it for myself because I need to be a good example for my child that I'm learning it also. So yeah. there are family discounts. We encourage that. And when when somebody walks in, can they can they just walk in off the street, sit off to the side, and watch for a few minutes or half hour or whatever it is, and just say, I just want to see what's going on. I want to see what it's about. Yes, absolutely. We encourage that. We I, I tell people who contact me, come in, observe a couple classes, and then take the free classes that we offer. Yeah. And what are the hours? How often are you open? Well, Monday through Friday, uh, there are adult classes are at uh, 7 p.m. The children are on Tuesdays and Thursdays. They start at 4 p.m. And for those uh, that are motivated enough to get up at 6 in the morning, I have a 6 o'clock on Wednesdays and Fridays, and then again at 12 o'clock on Wednesdays and Fridays. Saturdays, our program starts at 4 o'clock in the afternoon for the children, and that's 4 to 5, 5 to 6, and, and sorry, 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Saturdays. Yeah, so that, gives you, that gives the families the ability to do soccer, baseball, basketball in the mornings on Saturdays, and sure. then come into jujitsu. Nice. And if somebody wants to do two or three or four days a week, let's say that you have that person that walks in and says, listen, uh, my goal is to be a black belt as fast as possible. I don't care if I have to be here three or four or five days a week. Um, There's probably fast track. There's probably times, components, systems in place that say, here's a track, here's here's a method, if they are so inclined for that belt. I so wish that was possible because I would probably be a higher belt right now. I myself, once I once I was in six months, I was going five to six days a week into uh, a class. 
the the journey for everybody is a one year to get out of white belt whether you're going twice a week or you're going it's five days a week it takes one year to get out of that white belt every belt has its timeline what that does it shows everybody who comes in is that whether you have two days a week or you have five days a week your you will learn the jujitsu it just means if you come in more you're going to just be that much better than another individual but in general that's a timeline it takes we don't if you will, fast track anybody. Uh, there's individuals that are very athletic. We have football players that come in and they pick everything up really fast. So our conversation with them is you will become even that much better because you are spending the time to come in for that first year to really learn the basics. And then you just build on top of that. So there's a great foundation in place. Uh, last question here before we, uh, before we have to say goodbye. If a person wants to try this program, there is no commitment, meaning uh, I want to emphasize this. They walk in, they look at this, they say, hey, I really like Gracie Barra Jiu-Jitsu. I, I like Edgar. I, I like the program. I, I want to do a, a week's worth of classes. I want to try two or three lessons. They can do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. We encourage it. Uh, as a matter of fact, because if they hear this, if they're part of this uh, radio and they hear this and they call us or they come on in and they mention that they heard us on radio, uh, we're offering a free month of jujitsu when they sign up. But I, again, I go back, they have to do two free lessons. And if they tell me, I'm still not convinced I'd like to try another one, I'm going to give them two more. Because it's nice. the concept is not about, I want to sign you up uh, I, because of the money. I want to make sure that this is a, a, a first a life changing experience for you as it was for me as a business owner now but first it started off as i need to lose weight and i need to lower my stress so i want to pass that on to the next person folks that's edgar leone from from gracie bar jiu-jitsu located on peachland avenue right at lions if you're familiar with uh, the shopping center over there by the smart and final center uh, folks i wanted him on because i'm proud that he opened a up a business right here in santa clarita in your hometown and what matters most to me is that he and his family are committed to santa clarita and to making it so that your financial life really more importantly your physical life come out at the end in a much healthier scenario Folks, thanks for joining us. We'll be back in just a minute on Total Financial Solutions Safer Money Hour. I'm Eric Halloween. That's Jeff Gerard. Thanks for joining us, Edgar Leon from Gracie Bar Jiu Jitsu. We'll be right back.